Um, so I don't know what you think about when you think, oh, Dave's going to preach on prayer. And I think it's a, you know, we're going through this series of uh, the habits of, and I think it's it's difficult, isn't it, sometimes when you get something like this or like Bible study, I wonder if the, the danger is you're kind of thinking, oh, it's going to be, you know, 20 minutes of Dave just nagging us to pray more. But rest assured it won't be. And hopefully none of the series that we've been through ha has been a nag. You know, it is not about these are the things that you have to do. Adrian did a great thing about uh, about Bible study, about studying the Bible and which version last week. And, you know, none of this is about uh, is about trying to earn salvation or trying to have a checklist uh, of activities and then you'll get to sit at the front or, you know, you'll get a better place in heaven or whatever. It's not about that. It's just about capturing what God has done, how much we love him, and then if we want to get more into God, we want to know God better and actually probably have better lives, have healthier lives, better spiritual life, then these are things that we do. Uh, as an aside, we're working on a discipleship um, series. We're trialling it with the elders and some of the senior guys here. And uh, uh, Grant, who used to lead the church here, he used to go to school with Grant. He's grown up a bit since then. I could tell you some stories. But anyway, uh, Grant came and sort of shared what they're doing in Plymouth. And um, he, he, his catchphrase for, you know, why do you do it, was to seek and savour Jesus more. And I think that stuck with me. I know it stuck with Joe because it's quite easy to remember. And I have to, in a sense, I hope you get that this is what we're trying to do with this. You know, this is not about trying to bully you into something or earn your way into heaven. She said, actually, if you want to be, have a happier, healthier spiritual life, uh, if, you want to, if you want to do that, then these are some things that will really help you. So, uh, and hopefully as we go through, I, I, you know, I can uh, excite you about prayer, um, not, not depress you about not doing it. Um, right, so let's see if this controls. Do you want to know what I did this week? Uh, so I went to the Excel Centre in London. Um, there were no spreadsheets at all. It's not that kind of Excel, unfortunately. It was an accountants conference. I mean, some of you are thinking, yes, I didn't even have to say it. Yeah. Some of you are thinking, can you imagine anything more worse? 500 accountants trapped in a conference centre. I know. And guess who else is there? Salesmen and programmers, because most of it is accountancy software. Can you imagine the, the pizzazz and personality of 500 accountants, 500 programmers, all trapped uh, in a building? That's what I did this morning. If you want to see, that's my team. So you can tell who's the accountant, that's me at the back, and then at the front, that's our marketing guy, because he's got a ponytail and a beard. Uh, so he's, he's been like Joe, he's the creative one, he's got more hair than you, Joe, uh, it, you know, all sticks out the back. Uh, but yeah, there we were, and that was our stand, it's, uh, the Excel is a huge uh, conference centre, and, uh, and there we were, supposedly talking to clients, obviously nicking as many freebies uh, from other stands, uh, so some people, I didn't get much this year actually, but some people got cuddly toys and, uh, and all sorts of stuff that they'll never use. Um, it, it was it was an interesting uh, an interesting week for me. So we're on our stand. So bear in mind this is supposed to be uh, an accountancy conference, and uh, and this and you've got a name badge. So you all have a, a lanyard with a name badge. It's got your name and your role and the company you work for. So obviously most of ours are like accountant at you know Thomas Westcott or whatever. This guy walks up, starts talking to us. So I'm. I was stood on the corner about here, this guy walks up to me and my colleague Lynn, and we're chatting to this guy, and we sort of, you casually, you're always looking at people's stomach, because it hangs his ear, and you're, you're going, that says, owner of whatever it was, Dating Website Limited. And we're just thinking, oh. Dating Website? That's a funny name for a firm of accountants. <laughs> and, uh, but, of course, we're English, so we don't question the fact that he's from a dating website, but the conversation becomes increasingly bizarre because our, our tagline, you can see, that he could see from this corner was support. So he's like, how could you support my business? We said, well, we can review your files. He went a bit funny then because obviously he thought we were going to review his files that obviously uh, contained all this information about people's dating preferences. What me went was audit files. So it was this moment of two people looking at each other, but two English to actually say, we're in the wrong place. Anyway, he walked off and we finally realized 
He must have been bewildered because next door was an IT service providers conference and uh, he, the door was open, he just kept on going. And I just imagine what he thought when he got home. So he's going, you know, IBM servers, you know, and there's you know, all this backup drives, someone to support my website, someone trying to review my files. And he must have got increasingly bewildered. Anyway, that was fine. Went back to the hotel that night. Uh, I was asleep at midnight and I heard the door, which is funny. Uh, and so the door of my hotel opened and someone walked in, uh, which was quite a surprise. I said, I said, excuse me, this is my room. And he said, no, it's my room. I said, well, I think you'll find I'm in bed, so I, I, I win. Um, and he went, no, they've given me the key. I said, and then there was a slight pause. I thought, where is this going? I said, would you like to step outside so we could discuss it when I've got some trousers on? And he went, oh, okay, I suppose. Anyway, we sorted it out. He was on the wrong floor. They'd given him the wrong key. Um, ever tried to sleep once you've had a strange man walk in your bedroom? Um, it was a little tricky after that. Uh, anyway, why do I say all that? Um, Sometimes prayer and prayer meetings, if you want to call it that, prayer times can feel a long way away from the weirdness of everyday life, can't they? Maybe it's just me, but in the busyness of all this, it's so easy to kind of park the spiritual over here and then there's the practical. You know, there's the weird guy with the dating website, there's my colleagues as we're trying to sell stuff, there's the weird guy bursting into my hotel room, there's travelling on the tube, there's all of that kind of stuff. And then there's prayer life, which is uh, separate. Uh, whereas actually, so there's, a, you know, there's lots of stuff perhaps I want to talk about today, but one of the things is let's not forget, we want prayer to be a habit, the spiritual in the ordinary, if you like. We want prayer to be part of our day-to-day -day lives. Prayer needs to be there when we breathe. Prayer is not, uh, hear this the right way, prayer is not a special activity that you save up for special occasions. Mm -hmm. Now, we'll talk later about ways that might help you get into better habits, ways of doing it, the benefits of prayer meeting. But just the first thing is that prayer is not a specialist activity, only done by experts, and prayer is not a special activity saved for certain times. You know, forgive me, Lord, forgive us if I didn't, uh, you know, pray as I was going through the busyness of the conference this week. You know, God wants to hear our prayers, and we had some of this from Jill and, and James this week. You know, God is interested in everything. God wants to know uh, the, the nightmare when the kids won't sleep or behave themselves or get up or get to school on time, you know, depending what age they are, or pass their driving test or leave home and live somewhere else, where, wherever kids are. You know, the, the, God wants to be in it all. Uh, remember our vision and values, and we want to keep coming back to this. Our, our vision is that we are a church of community, of discipleship and mission, and then you can see the things on the right uh, that link into that. So we are fundamentally a church of community, discipleship and mission. Prayer is part of that. Prayer should be like breathing. Prayer is who we are. It's not almost not something we do, it's something that defines who we are. We are a people of prayer. We can't do community without prayer you know this morning in the prayer meeting you're thinking what do I do I want to pray for these people that are hurting I want to pray for what Adrian's doing in Weymouth I want to pray for these things of course I do because it's part of who we are it's part of being a community we are in it together and discipleship if I want to seek and savor Jesus more if I want to know more about God if I want to get better in my walk with him <laughs> I'm going to have to pray about it. I can't do it in isolation from a conversation with God. And if I want to talk to my friends about Jesus, then man, I need to pray. Because I'm out of ideas myself. I need to pray for spiritual appointments. I need to pray for things to say. So, fundamentally, who we are as a church should be one of prayer. There's different kinds of prayer, different contexts, different times, yeah. But fundamentally, prayer should be part of who we are in everything. It should be the spiritual in the ordinary, in the day-to-day -day of living, loving, and seeking God together as a church. So starting at the beginning then, perhaps if you're not a Christian, what is prayer? I remember, always remember being at university and, and someone, you know, just really became a Christian but still could not quite get what prayer was. And so we said, well look, here's a, um, I looked up uh, one definition and I think you'll find this really helpful. This is what Wikipedia says. 
Prayer is a, yeah, brace yourself. Prayer is an invocation or act that seeks to activate a rapport with an object of worship through deliberate communication. Oh, do you all feel really blessed by that now? Wow. Thank God for my deliberate act or invocation that is, uh, anyway. Um, the Diocese of London says, Prayer is giving our attention to God in a two-way spiritual relationship where we talk to God and also listen to him. Prayer is like a child's conversation uh, with their father. <laughs> I think that's lovely. I'll read it again. Prayer is giving our attention to God in a two-way spiritual relationship where we talk to God and also listen to him. Prayer is like a child's conversation uh, with their father. So what is prayer? Prayer is a conversation with God. That's all it is. Prayer is a conversation with God. I join a lot of Wi-Fi networks. Uh, they're all secure ones, hopefully, as I travel around to different places. And when you join it, any IT geeks, well, John hopefully will recognise this message, wherever John is. Sometimes you get a message that says, do you want to be discoverable on the network? And of course, I always say no. But actually, there's a sense of that with God. Is it, do you want to be discoverable on God's network? Because it's a two-way conversation. It's not just reading a list of requests and not listening. It is a two-way conversation. Prayer is a two-way conversation with God. And actually, here's something else I think it'd be good to rejoice in. You can have a two-way conversation with God. Joe, you can have a two-way conversation with God. Matt, you can have a two-way conversation with God. Mark, I'm not sure he knows about you. No, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. Mark, you can have a two-way conversation with God. I'm a big fan of Elon Musk. I mean, I think he's probably an alien, but, uh, you know, I can't have a conversation with Elon Musk. You know, I, wouldn't you love to have a conversation with the Queen and see how she's feeling just before her uh, jubilee? Uh, but we can't have a conversation with the Queen. You've got no right to do that. But we heard this morning the song Indescribable. It's brilliant how God's led some of the songs uh, and we've got this indescribable, you know, untamable. And God says, do you want a conversation with me? You can have one. You can have a conversation with God. Anytime, anywhere, in your pants, in church, when you're upset. I said that the, this girl who really didn't get prayer, we said, look, prayer is a conversation with God. And she said, I feel really bad. We said, why? She said, I was in the bath. And I really just felt upset. I reached out to God in prayer. But now I'm worried that I prayed when I was in the bath. And we're going, no, that's the glory of God. Of course, I want to be respectful. Don't get me wrong. But God wants to have a conversation with you whenever, wherever, however you come. Come on, I must get an amen for that. Yeah, I know we're not a black church, but come on. You know, and if nothing else, capture that about prayer. Prayer is not a burden that God says, you've got to do this. You've got to pray. Like you've got a little timer. Have you done enough? You ever tried planking? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, where you go, right, I only passed the test if I plank for 30 seconds. Oh, I failed it. The app says I haven't done enough exercise. My watch keeps telling me I haven't stood up enough. That is not prayer. Prayer says God saying, here's a tremendous gift I've given you. Come on, amen. amen. This is what prayer is. I want to get you excited about it. I want to get myself excited about prayer. So none of this morning is about, you've got, to, you've got to have read the book Adrian recommended. Has anyone not recommended it? Matt, I bet you, Matt's in the front. Sorry, Matt, you haven't read it. That is not what God's saying about prayer. Sorry, poor Matt, you're right at the front. What can I do? <laughs> Matt's my brother-in-law. I can take the mick out of Matt. But that's not what God's saying about prayer. Come on, God's saying, I want you to get in the habit of it because it's brilliant. Because I've given you access. Are you not excited? You know, how are you feeling? God, let's talk to God. You want to have, you want to speak to your heavenly Father? Do it. You want God to talk to you? You can. God has given you access. Oh, my voice is getting higher. <laughs> getting excited because I think the rest. We'll talk about some practical stuff. Of course we will. But I do think this is the most important thing because we are saved by grace. God gives us access to the throne freely everything else is just an outworking of that and so if you're not a christian here why are we getting excited about prayer which is what i used to do at school boring sat in a pew had to do it we're excited because our heavenly father has made a way if you're taking notes or you've got a bible ephesians 3:12, in him 
So this is, a, I'll say it again, sorry, Ephesians 3, 12. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. That's brilliant. And hopefully for me, just as I've been preparing it this week, it's slightly changed my attitude of prayer. It's taken away some of the guilt for not doing it enough and turned it into, it's just great that I get the chance to. And I just pray, I, maybe it's, this is just for me, so ignore all of it. But if this is for you, can I release you from the guilt of not praying enough and turn it into, just thank you God that I can. I don't do it enough, don't do it well enough, just thank you God that I can. Thank you God that you give me that opportunity. God allowed us to enter his presence with freedom and confidence. Uh, if you move back a bit, if you've got your Bible, Ephesians 2 verse 12 says, Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. By Christ's sacrifice, then, we are able to enter God's presence. As we've said in our worship this morning, as we said in our prayer meeting this morning, we get to enter God's presence. Hallelujah. It's just great. So if nothing else this morning, just rejoice that you can. Don't take away guilt that you don't pray enough. Take away joy that we get to do it at all. So often we get wrapped up in guilt. And maybe it does strange things to your mind. It does strange things to me sometimes. Liz and I were apart this week because I was in the madness of Accountex. And, um, uh, you know, you don't always communicate very well because you're trying to get the timing of when you can connect, have you got a signal and that kind of stuff. When I get home, Liz doesn't want to punish me for not calling her enough that week and say, right, now don't speak to me for the whole weekend as a punishment. What Liz wants to do is give me a hug and say, let's talk now. But I think sometimes in our prayer life, we're going, I feel so guilty, God, that I didn't pray last week. I can't talk to you. I can't face you. I can't look at you, God, because I haven't done it well enough. So I just can't look at you. And God's just going, that's just madness. Because what I want to do is I want to talk to you now. Just forget what's happened. Let's do it now. And so just think about what your Heavenly Father has done. He's created a way. If you've never prayed before, then pray now. Don't worry about what, what you have or haven't done in the past because God has made access. In him and through faith in him, Ephesians 3.12, we may approach with freedom and confidence. There's no ifs, there's no buts. We can approach God with confidence. So we can do it anywhere, anytime. But if you want to pray more, uh, to be practical, it's often helpful to try and get some discipline. And I'm not very good at this, but I, um, I read this book that Adrian recommended, uh, which uh, so you would be welcome to borrow, but it's Adrian, so uh, you should probably ask him. And don't steal it, because uh, that's kind of weird, isn't it? I thought, well, steal that Bible. Uh, it doesn't kind of cancel each other out. Uh, but it's a really, really practical read. It's not heavy. It's not sort of theological in that sense. It's really practical. So some of what I'm going to say was inspired uh, by that. Some of the ideas there and some of the ideas you can think about that if you want to go deeper, it might be good to set a time. I think it might depend on your character. So, uh, you know, I like things a little bit loose maybe, but I think for a lot of people, it is helpful to have a set time and a set location. So if, you, if that's helpful for you, think about whether you can have good discipline and have a, a, a sensible time to do it every day. When you pray, give yourself a target of only praying for five minutes. If you feel good, stop after five minutes. If you feel terrible, stop after five minutes. But stop after five minutes. If you don't do it that day, then the next day just do five minutes. Don't try and do a rollover. <laughs> I don't know if any of you have tried various activities to get fit. I tried uh, once and did it quite a while at university where I said every day I will do, I think it was 50 press-ups. Uh, but of course then one day you think, I, I don't want to do any. And then the next day you think, right, today I've got to do 100. 
a bit tired because I'm revising, obviously, not getting my attempt in bowling score up, which uh, I did quite a lot at university. Uh, and then so then the third day, you think, well, maybe I should do, oh, I've got to do 150 now. By the weekend, you're thinking, I've got to do 1,000, and to be honest, I never did any push-ups ever again. <laughs> and of course, that's stupid, because I should have done something. And I think it's the same with prayer. Don't think this is cumulative. If you don't pray one day, just sort of write it off and say, right, sorry, God, let's go again. Otherwise, it will just build up so much guilt and so much pressure. And then we end up not praying. And God's just like, but it's a bit like the kids or Liz. Again, you know, it'd be silly if I said, oh, I really didn't spend much time with you yesterday, but I feel so guilty. I'm not going to do anything today. They go, right, if you've got time, let's do that. Find a location that works for you. Yeah, and this depends perhaps on the weather or your character. Um, I love a nap. I think I've told you this before. I do love a nap. A good chair, sofa, virtually anywhere really. Except a train. I've always had an irrational fear of sleeping on a train in case you wake up in Glasgow. Uh, but So whichever works for you, that chair, a lot of people say a comfortable chair is absolutely brilliant for prayer. I think for me, a, that kind of chair is absolutely brilliant for napping. And uh, that would be not enough prayer going on. But outside, when I'm walking the dog, brilliant. Um, some people like to stand up and walk around because uh, it gives you something to do. But, you know, whatever works for you because God can hear you anywhere. In the bath, if that works for you. In bed, if that works for you. There are no sort of rules, if you like. We're just trying to say, is there a context that helps you find God? Maybe being consistent helps because you will quickly get into the mindset. And I know that. I often uh, pray when I walk the dog uh, at Farway at the nature reserve there. And because it's quite familiar to see a certain view and think, wow, God, I love the view. Let's start praying. Actually, it can be quicker to get into that attitude. So say, these are just tips. There are no rules. We don't want to get stressed about it. But if that is helpful, sometimes being consistent about the location and time can help it easier to get into an attitude of prayer. <coughs> so I googled places to pray and came up with the prayer closet. Now, I don't recommend praying in a cupboard, but actually I think it's in this book. He says one of his friends does do it um, in a cupboard under the stairs. Um, I'm not sure if he's getting confused between that and Harry Potter, but I suppose it is somewhere that is free of distractions, somewhere you can focus, maybe, and whatever helps you uh, focus. Uh, because we're all different. Let's not set rules, but let's try and be helpful. So, and potentially, being consistent a bit more helps you uh, to focus. Uh, what if your mind um, wanders? All of our minds uh, wander to really random things, don't they? Sometimes when you're praying, it's amazing how suddenly, you know, you really worry like you know why do the clocks go back or some, something just absolutely random pops pops into your head are there things to help so some people like to walk around that helps because it gives you something to do uh, in the book it said which i can relate to sometimes people like to hold things or 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 have things now don't get me wrong these are not holy um, I don't, don't believe in that, I, you know, but symbols might be helpful, again, to get your brain into an attitude of prayer. Uh, so I've got an example, I, uh, uh, I sometimes carry a bit of tiger's eye, so my dad had a tiger's eye ri uh, ring, it always reminds me of my dad, and we bought it on holiday with the kids. So there's something, you can see I'm fiddling with it now, I use it like a fidget spinner if it's a particularly annoying client. So, yeah, better than hurting them or being rude, you just fiddle with it. But actually something like that, it has pleasant memories and you're just thinking, I don't get how you made that God, that, you know, that, that's really pretty. Thank you God that you're a creator. Look how the edges are smooth, Lord take my, take my rough edges and make that smooth. That's really beautiful. I, like the, I remember we went on holiday Lord, thank you for Cornwall. Cornwall's brilliant. You are an awesome creator, God. I want to worship you. I went there with my family. Can I now pray for my family? And so sometimes that kind of thing is, is helpful. Uh, we were in the Bible bookshop yesterday, and, uh, and, and William got a cross. And sometimes that is helpful. Just, uh, just something. So if I'm focused on that, it's harder to think about the shopping or the car needs a wash or whatever. It, it, it's easier to go, I'm just thinking about your cross, it's made of wood. That's beautiful that you made the tree grow. <coughs> Lord, it reminds me of your tree. It reminds me of what you did for me, Lord. 
It's hard to get, get distracted sometimes if you've got something in your hands. So I just commend it to you. These are all things to try because we just want to try. If it doesn't work, try something else. Another point is if your mind is wandering to something, maybe your mind's trying to tell you you're worried about something and you won't admit it to yourself. Uh, in the book, he gives an example. He kept trying to pray and in all his times of prayer, all he could think about was how much this person annoyed him. And so he said to his church leader, you know, I'm trying to pray. How do I stop my mind wandering because this person really annoys me? And he said, well, actually, you need to deal with that. Why don't you pray to God about that? He's going, no, I can't do that. I'm praying about world peace and revival. Uh, and, he's going, and he's going, his church leader was saying to him, what are you talking about? There's something on your mind. God cares about that. I think it's James or someone said this morning. God cares about that issue in your life as much as the big stuff. So if your mind is wandering to something that you just, I just can't get past that. that okay, if it's just whether socks should be blue or white, um, that's clearly just a distraction. But if it's something you're going, this is really gnawing at me, then bring it to God. Because God wants to hear it. God cares about you personally. You know, yes, we want to worship God in our prayers, but also God's two-way conversation. God might be saying to you, what's really upsetting you? What's really on your mind today? And your mind is already telling you, it's this. I'm telling you what it is. Okay, God, let's talk about that. Let's be real. Let's be authentic. You know, we don't want to pray uh, impressive prayers in a prayer meeting so other people are impressed. You know, we saw that in the New Testament, Jesus just mocking the Pharisees for trying to be impressive. But equally, even if I'm on my own, I don't want to just pray impressive prayers thinking God's impressed. Because, man, he knows me better than that. He knows what's going on. So be real with God. He knows anyway, but he wants to hear it from you. Let me make two final uh, points, although I think there are three actually. But anyway, let me make two final points. Um, firstly, it's good to pray with others. Um, now, it, we, now, we're not going to launch prayer triplets. Sorry about the quality of that picture. But I think the image on the front just gives you an idea of when it was launched. And I'm sure if you were in churches in the 70s, because that moustache alone on that guy is telling you this was a 70s thing. Um, it is still going in some churches. Um, I said, I'm not, we're not officially launching it or anything like that. But as I think about it, there is power in agreeing to pray with others, whether that's our monthly prayer meeting or whether that's something like that. So I know my dad and a couple of others, I'm sure Ian, you would have been in the Baptist church when they did that, um, used to just pray together. There is something about agreeing to meet people and pray that you're too embarrassed to say, I can't be bothered, and you turn up. Uh, when my hips were better, uh, we used to go running. I don't know if Simon's here actually, but Simon Bates. Oh, hi, Simon. We used to go running with John Burgess. Um, and uh, we would all meet at eight o'clock somewhere. And they say there's nothing like knowing that Simon's going to be there and Sarah Greenman would be there, knowing that they're going, oh, I'd better go because they're going to be there. And you go and you take part and it's actually good for you. So actually, maybe there is something where if you're really struggling with getting time to pray, then you know, don't overpromise. But maybe once a week or something, you say to some friends, shall we get together just for 20 minutes, quarter of an hour, half an hour, somewhere, in a car park, in a pub, somewhere, and we'll just pray for half an hour. And then maybe you'll be just a little bit of incentive to go and do that and pray together. If you already meet your friends for coffee regularly, why don't you pray with them? You know, we said one of our vision and values is discipleship. We often socialise. Can we give it a bit more of an edge? Yeah, let's go for coffee. Let's go for breakfast at Boston's. Whatever we're going to do, let's just spend five minutes saying, really, how are you? Can I pray for you? Let's just inject prayer in everything we do. It's good to pray with others. It's good to pray. It, 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 uh, it's a, it gives us a bit of discipline. It might help you focus on other things, things that are, it's going on with other people, things that are happening in the world. We've got our prayer meeting on Tuesday. We'd love to see it full. And even if you don't feel like praying... Don't go just when you feel like praying. Liz always says the time to go is when you don't feel like it. Yeah. Someone's trying to stop you. Now, you don't have to say anything because, you know, the brilliant thing about prayer meetings is other people pray. That's why we worship together. So does God hear you when you pray quietly and when you pray loudly? Of course God does. 
But there is, as a community, as a fellowship, as a church, it's great when you hear other people pray. So why do I go to prayer meetings? Because firstly, I know I'm going to pray, whereas if I stayed at home, no matter what I said, in reality, I'd watch telly. So I go because it gives me a little bit of discipline. I know I will pray. It helps me pray for things other than myself because I'm reminded of what other people think about. I'm reminded of what's going on in the world and, and things like that. And I go when I don't feel like praying because actually I just like hearing other people pray. You know, you go there and you hear, I don't know, I won't pick on a name, but you hear someone shouting out a prayer and you think, oh, that's good. I wasn't really in the mood, but now I'm starting to... I'm starting to get it now because we're a family. We do it together. We encourage one another. Why would you come to a prayer meeting at 10 o'clock in the morning uh, out at the back there? Because actually hearing other people pray is good. And maybe you can't make it all. Come for a minute. Come for 30 seconds. See if it does you any good. I was really not wanting to come to church last week. I don't know why. Just, you know, just work was busy and... <coughs> kids were running a little bit late perhaps as normal and you're thinking you get there and I got here and I realized it was about uh, eight minutes past ten and I was hosting which is even worse because you thought oh, I've got to try and be cheerful and something <laughs> I don't know what to say um, and I just felt God prompted go to the prayer meeting I don't want to go to the prayer meeting God I've missed the start it'd be rude we're British come on we should be there early and God just said just go shut up get on with it David so, okay and uh, I don't think I prayed, just stood there because there weren't any seats. Just heard, other, heard Adrian and someone else pray. I thought, oh, I'm starting to get it now. I'm starting to come into God's presence. I, I didn't pray, but being with prayers was good for me. And then I was ready to go. Then God said, you've got a talk that says triumph on it. Share something about being triumphant. Come on, David, let's go. And so going to a prayer meeting is good for you. <coughs> it's that you can pray at home. And if you can't make it for reasons, please don't feel guilt. But if you can go, you will find it's good for you, even if you say nothing. It is also good to pray out loud, though, if you can. Sometimes it's, you know, it's a real act of submission uh, to actually obey God and pray out loud. But I do think it's good. Jill shared this morning, when you've got words of God, even if you're just praying a Bible verse, it is good to speak out loud. You remember something like four times uh, what you're thinking if you say it out loud. Um, if you have voices in your head that are distracting you, telling you you're worthless, telling you God doesn't care, telling you you're uh, stupid for being there, the, the best way to drown them out is to say out loud something about how good God is. Um, I heard something on UCB1 saying that your internal voice speaks a lot faster than your external voice. So if you're getting negative feelings or you're, you're told that you're unworthy and God doesn't want you here, that can hammer away at you when you're trying to worship. And the way to drown it out is just to speak it out. If you're worried about what to pray, then get your Bible. Uh, and we'll try this, well, I, well, I'll lead you with some prayer using the Bible later. But if nothing else, as we worship, just be thinking, well, actually, we've got the Bible. I've just opened it randomly. Of course, you do need to check before you read it out, obviously. Uh, but Psalms is always a good start. You know, Lord, I feel rubbish, but may your unfailing love come to me, Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Then I can answer anyone who taunts me, for I trust in your word. There, feeling better now? And of course, what does it do for everyone else? Brilliant. Encourages everyone. And I think, I know that God hears us when we're quiet as well. I says, it's not a competition. It's not about volume. But I just think we could, we could be Quakers and sit here in silence. And there is power in silence. I know that. But then I think, what would it be like if 100 people in this room, when it came to worship, just took turns to say, God, I love you? Wouldn't that be really exciting? Not a long prayer, but just something that says, this is what's on my heart. Uh, finally then, and then we'll get the, the band to come up. Um, as I was preparing for this, say I was out praying. Uh, that's uh, near the, the, the dog is in there somewhere, near the, uh, the bottom of the hill at the faraway nature reserve, which is a good, although you then have to climb back up again. Um, but I was just... Just praying, just preparing for this morning. And uh, as uh, said, the black dot is Lily. As she was running down the field, uh, there must be some kinds of plants in there. <laughs> see, I'm a great nature lover. Um, and as she brushed past them, you could see them burst. 
And um, I was just reminded of the Hillsong song, uh, and uh, whether it was God or not, but the, 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 the chorus is touching heaven, changing earth. I just got you know, this sense of God saying, do you know what? Uh, I'm ready to bless you this morning, ready to bless you, ready for that two-way communication when you pray. You've just got to touch me. It's not about being clever. It's not about dragging blessing out of heaven. It's just touching heaven and the blessing just explodes. We want to change earth for the good. With the power of what God is doing, uh, we do that through prayer. Um, there's a quote, famous quote from Billy Graham. Heaven is full of answers to prayers for which no one ever bothered to ask. Maybe we should ask. Okay. Come on, worship team, we'll worship. And then as we go through, uh, I'm going to interrupt a couple of times and we'll pray. But please don't feel awkward. Don't feel any pressure to pray out. But it, it's good if you can do. Uh, we will have a time of praying for each other. Uh, but we, uh, we I will find a way to, I'll make it clear later, if you want someone to pray for you and come over, you'll indicate that. If you want to be left alone, then we'll make sure that happens. So no one, please be embarrassed or feel under any pressure. Because I do think one of the key things today is just to feel released it's great that as a family we can pray to God and expect him to hear